take the headset off, it takes forever. I was starving. I haven't had anything since six in the morning. And then, boom, I thought I'd sneak in a banana. Bad move. Here he is, one half of the team. Weekdays on Czech television from 10 a.m. to noon. It's Canucks Insider Friday regular. The one and only Rick Dollywell. How we doing, Rick? Uh, couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. He's in a hurry. He's got to get to the airport and catch a flight, Blake. So let's mm. make this chop chop, all right? He may have a little less patience for you today than he has on most Fridays. I always have time for you guys. And by the way, uh, just so you guys know, uh, bananas, uh, I have two every day, sometimes three. Uh, potassium, mm. uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, you get all the all the potassium you need in a day mm. from your lovely yellow what friend. Is, what, what does potassium do for you? Right. Now, uh, here you go again. Harvard, uh, the Harvard guy, Pike Pitt. <laughs> You're oh, singing you... his praises. Gives hey, him energy, you... makes him uh, regular. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's good for you, Blake. Fruits and vegetables. Get your head out of your ass. Mm-hmm. What else do you need to know? Fruits and I don't want to put my head in my ass if I've had a lot of potassium. But you know what? There's that arrogant, I went to Harvard, I know everything. I'm an expert. I was asking you a question about, about... Fruits and vegetables. They're good for you. Yeah, okay. So, to know antioxidants uh, that they're good they give you energy it's good for all your organs for the record that arrogant pricking you to come out again and rip an enemy uh for the record i was told we got to be very quick with this hit let's not waste time and delay on oh, no, we don't have, we don't have alternative to. topics so let's get right at it so if i have this straight jim rutherford's representative who yeah. met with francesco aquilini and got him the gig here in vancouver is now consulting for the Philadelphia Flyers and looking to get them a new president of hockey operations. And so it only stands to reason that one would wonder, is he going to recommend his guy, Jim Rutherford, to Philly? What do you know there, Rick? Well, and Frank Cervelli just moved a, a story this morning about is that a conflict of interest. Here, here's what I'll tell you about the Philadelphia thing, and we'll get into Emily Castonga in a bit. But I, if someone told me, a couple of people actually said they heard uh, Rutherford's name pop up in Philly. Uh, but I texted Jim yesterday, and I told him, I said, is there anything to that? And he said, no, I'm committed to the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, you can't get rid of me that quick, Ricky. Uh, but as I delved into it, I found out what you just said, uh, uh, Matt, the Rutherford's agent, his firm is helping the Flyers in search for hiring people. That's where it may have started the, the Rutherford Philly. There's nothing to it. But, the, you know, I think another guy they represent, and someone told me that th- this morning, is Stan Bowman. So you can understand, as Cervelli said in a story, that there is that a com- conflict of interest. Look, for me, I, I this is what's important to me. Rutherford's not going anywhere. I, I believe this market uh, did get to him a, a, li- a little bit, especially at the height of the Boudreaux firing. And But, you know, with success of Rick talking and what he's done down the stretch, the waters have calmed for Rutherford, and he can go about his business and finish what he started. Um, you know the article in the Pittsburgh Tribune about, you know, you guys all remember that. Look, the key is, Rutherford told me yesterday, he's committed 100% to the city of Vancouver, to the Vancouver Canucks, and he wants to finish what he started, guys. Do you think he's loving that because he's zipped it? Do you think he's finding the waters calmer because he's he's taking that step back? Well, they, 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 you know, the great greatest marketing tool in the world, Blake, is uh, is winning. It's it calms waters. It it helps people. You know, it's not fun being on the losing end all the time. And you know, there's negativity, and you got media, you got Canucks Twitter, and, and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden, you start winning, and a lot of that negativity goes away. So I think, look, I I, I think Jim is on board with finishing this job. And, and doing it to the best of his ability. You know, he was out at the uh, uh, Abbotsford playoff game with Aquilini and Alvin and Tockett and Foot and all those guys. Uh, I, I'm start, and I think uh, Matt wrote an article that there's more synergy now. You are starting to see uh, some good things from this management group. I think the move to Abbotsford was absolutely, I, I don't know why they didn't do it years ago. I know, I understand why they like Utica. It, it, it's, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a good hockey town, not much travel, more practice practice uh, you know you got the snow uh, you got the hockey feel you got all that stuff but my goodness uh, hey. Abbotsford is proving to be a really really good move 
Why didn't it happen years ago? They were nearly done a deal, and the Aquilini squeezed Abbotsford, and Abbotsford walked away. And sure enough, years later, Abbotsford was in a more desperate spot, and it became a better sweetheart deal for Canuck Sports Entertainment. What do you know about Emily Castingay with the Flyers? Oh, my goodness. This story's all over the map. Uh, half the people you talk to say uh, nothing is going on with Castingay and interest from Philadelphia, the Flyers. Others say there's some, there was some sort of an interview or at least a conversation uh, between Castongay and the Flyers. Uh, I heard through the grapevine she's not doing cartwheels. It got public. But we'll see where it goes. Uh, but you know the old saying, and, and you guys have, you know, have been in our industry long enough to know where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, you know, so I, 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 I heard Darren Drager say the Canucks, uh, she didn't talk to Philly, but I've, I've had people say there was something like I, maybe even a conversation. I don't know. Like uh, some people say, yes, something happened. Some say, no, it didn't happen. So it's just all over the map. Is but, this through the aforementioned Glassberg, Rick? Like it would be that firm well, uh, that I, Glassberg I, I, runs that made I, an I, overture or something I, like that? I, I, I don't. First of all, I don't know if she's got an agent. She's been an agent all her life, Matt. I don't mm-hmm. think she would need an agent. No, I so, mean, I mean, Glasberg, the agent, the representative of, of Rutherford, yeah, who's helping the Flyers. Would he have well, reached out? Maybe the maybe the Flyers told uh, maybe th- that firm told the Flyers to call her. Oh, I something like mean. that. Some sort of yeah. connection through an it's intermediary to, like Glasberg. Yeah. Job to help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, I I don't know that. I I can only tell you what I know. It's all over mm-hmm. the map that story, but. Uh, we'll see where it goes, but I, I don't think there's something super, super going on there. But we, there, as no. of right now, Jason has been busy. They've uh, signed a player, Elias Pettersson. Uh, alas, <laughs> it's not the Elias Pettersson everybody's been waiting oh. to be signed. But this guy needed to be signed too, and he had a nice season. He's an unspectacular defenseman, but he's been getting the job done. He's been ticking the boxes, is what we say about these prospects. They can only do what they can do. Uh, and uh, and Liz Pedersen on defense is uh, is doing everything he can do within his skill set to to make sure he gets to the National Hockey League, isn't he? You know what I like uh, since Chris Tanev left, uh, the Canucks, uh, you know, Luke Shen was there. But Chris, when Chris Tanev left, the Canucks lost that stay-at-home type defenseman. And now what I've noticed with Elias Pedersen, mm-hmm. the defenseman, stay-at-home type, you know, Hiroshi stay-at-home type, you know, Philip Johans, uh, Johansson coming over from Sweden. They're starting to identify, you know what, just don't draft, you know, kids who can score and collect points. You know, you need those guys that are stay-at-home type defensemen, and that's what Elias Pettersson is, good size. He can skate. I talked to uh, my guy in Sweden who says, you know what, Rick, this guy's going to be a, he's gonna be a good player. He's, he just, everything about this guy you got to like. Right now the plan and the intention is for Pettersson to play one more year in Sweden. He'll be in Vancouver to train so the Canucks uh, – development staff can keep an eye on them which i think is a great move and here's the other thing for you guys europeans don't mind staying an extra year overseas for development reasons look at last year canucks signed 22 year old defenseman philip uh, philip johansson guess what it was his choice to play one more a year in sweden it wasn't it wasn't the team it, it, it was the player that said and he was 22 you know you remember jonathan dallin going back uh, albeit he wasn't with the Canucks anymore, but he went back to Sweden. Uh, you know what? The Europeans don't mind going back and playing uh, in, in, you know what, uh, going back and being in a comfort zone in their home country, their home leagues. Uh, it, I, I give this uh, kid credit, and I give Johan- uh, Philip Johansson credit for going back to Sweden last year, and the Canucks are really high on him. Jason King, no longer a Rick Tockett assistant, and we're wondering who's going to run the power play. Uh, what happened here? What do you know? Are they going to replace him, oh. or is it going to be filled internally? Is it going to be Gonchar? What's up on the bench? Well, let me tell you about the power play first. Canucks were the 11th highest scoring team in the NHL, right? They got the best, one of the best quarterback, uh, possibly the one of the best guys you can have quarterback a power play. There's a lot of skill there. Like, this power play is going to be fine for a long time. I, I don't see that dropping off. But, yes, Jason King had a lot to do with the power play the last three years. Look, guys, when I look into this, uh, he wasn't Rick Tockett's guy. Sergey Gonchar and Adam Foote were. Uh, he brought those guys. When Tockett called Travis Green before he took the Vancouver job, because those two guys are close friends, right, Green gave a good review of King. And Green's a big fan uh, of Jason King going back to their Utica days. But going forward, Tockett, you know what? Guess what? He, you know, he felt it was time for a change. And uh, King was in the Canucks organization for seven years, uh, four in Utica, three in Vancouver. Look at, look at his three years in Vancouver, guys. Green, Boudreaux, and Tockett. He had three guys. He had three coaches. 
for crying out loud, which you don't see much of. But anyways, uh, I, I, I think this is uh, just a comfort zone for Rick Tockett. He's got, he's got Mike Yo. He's got Gonchar. He's got foot. He can go forward. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, uh, coaching staff. If you, you, know, ask you know why Mike yeah. Yo survives? You, any intel what they liked about him or relationships? Heard, or? Uh, first of all, uh, Mike Yo's got ties to Alvin and uh, in Pittsburgh, right, guys? You know, and Rutherford. So he's got ties. He's he's well liked in the organization. But I also heard, like, he wasn't uh, Boudreaux's choice to come to Vancouver. Mike Yo last summer. Not not many think it was Boudreaux's choice. But I will tell you this. Uh, uh, from what I heard, Boudreaux liked Mike Yo. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he liked him. And the story when... I got, Rick, was Boudreaux and Yo had history, of course, but that, yep. yes, Yo was uh, – was, uh, um, Management choice. Yeah. Management choice uh, delivered yeah, to Boudreaux's too. staff, but they work well again together. And yep. let's also remember, because uh, we learned this with Brad Shaw, whatever you hear about it's coaching true. staff right now – is not necessarily in stone, right? Like the coaching staffs tend to be a little bit more malleable over the course of the summer. So we'll see how more coaching jobs shake down when more coaches are hired, fired, and what have you. Right, Rick? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point, Matt, and you're bang on 150%. If something happens in July where another team calls for Mike Yo and it's a better position for him, who's uh, the Canucks aren't going to stop him. Right. You know, and just like with Emily Castongay, if if somebody calls, you don't stop someone from advancing. Mm-hmm. You don't you never stop. I have talked to many hockey people over the years and nobody really likes to stop someone from advancing their career. So, uh, if somebody calls for Mike Yo in the summer, who knows? You never yep. know. Yeah, I mean, uh, you yeah. know, Anaheim's looking for a head coach. You could have people go into Philly or Pittsburgh who want their own coaches. Calgary needs a, a GM. Well, there's as well, also so. that fancy word, associate coach, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Associate coach is considered the <laughs> Uber assistant, right? And so <laughs> you, if you get the associate coach, then you you get to move up. Well, Rick, and guys, there's going to be more openings after the first round. You know oh, yes, that. for sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Is know, it just or, Anaheim right now? That's like, oh no, Columbus as well. Columbus, Columbus, uh, Anaheim, and uh, you know, there's GM openings. Uh, you know, right. there'll probably be a couple more after the first round if if some bosses aren't happy. So that that's a possibility as well. Yeah. No. Uh, Talking can I about give a, NHL yeah. head. Yeah. So we know Ethan Bear's going to go play for Canada. I, we. We know. I do want to say I, I do want to say something about Ethan Bear. He is going to go to Finland. His agent Jason Davison doesn't think this will uh, affect his uh, contract talks with the Canucks. He is expecting. Uh, what happens, guys, is Hockey Canada picks up the insurance on the players, right? So uh, that's going to happen. That I got no indication that that's not going to happen. I'd be shocked if it didn't. But anyways, uh, Bears and RFA doesn't have a contract for next year. What I can tell you is the Vancouver Canucks and Bears agent continue to talk about a new deal. Uh, it, it's going to be anywhere from one to three years, guys. There, there's no offense about, about, about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elias Pedersen's agent, J.P. Berry, uh, told me this morning they continue to work on insurance for him to play for Sweden at the Worlds. But this one's not going to be easy, guys. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, some in uh, Sweden uh, have told me that they're pessimistic that they'll cover enough of the players like him based on the past. Okay, look, Ethan Bear insurance, not hard to get. Elias Pettersson insurance, hard to get because he's a nine, ten, eleven million dollar player. It's, a, right. it's it's two ends of the spectrum. So I'm not saying that Pettersson isn't going to get the insurance, but there it's going to be tough. It's not easy, and they've been mm-hmm. talking for a while. So I'm just going to tell you right now. Uh, you know what? I, I don't know if that happens. If it happens, great. But uh, there are some pessimistic only because it's a ton of money and it's a very hard per, a very hard player to insure. Right. Neil Zaman, is he going to be with Sweden? I, I, I checked on uh, Neil Zaman last night. And 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 then I, I would I would think that he has to be on the Swedish radar, but I don't think that there's been contact there yet. Okay. But yeah, and Connor Garland is going to play for the Americans. You know what? He had a strong finish. Really happy for this guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brock Besser. Uh, here's the one for you guys. Brock Besser. I'm told there is a small, small chance he goes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, also on JT Miller, I'm told unlikely he goes. Uh, so there you go. What about Ronick with Czechia? Any chance there? Don't know. Are you serious? The guy's injured. He played four. The Canucks have said he's looking at months and months of rehab. How do you see him playing for Finland or uh, uh, Czechs? I didn't realize it was months and months of, of yeah, rehab. Yeah, they're, they're looking it's at that serious, that. huh? 
Yeah, well, I, from everything we were told, that he's gonna, he needs the whole summer to rehab. No, there's no chance. And sorry, did we get a Demko statement that he wasn't going to play too? His wife uh, is expecting, I think. Right. And, okay. Quinn, and Quinn Hughes, I reported a couple of weeks ago, is not going to go. Yeah. So the Canucks have a wonderful uh, – the Americans must love the Canucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so many American-based good players in Vancouver. And, right. uh, you know, so there you go. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, Ironically, Quinn, Russians and Americans. Very odd. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Vancouver roster. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, – Good uh, scouts in Russia and in the U.S. <laughs> and uh, the um, – the uh, we missed Washington is also oh, Peter Laviolette coach. Yes, Laviolette. Yes. Okay, before I let you go, I got to bring something up. Mm. Okay, so Blake Price had a tweet this week, and it read like this: Canada, be careful! Don't give Leaf fans any receipts for later in the series. Patience with the Schadenfreude. Freude, yeah. Schaden what? Schaden what? Schadenfreude. Freude. Okay, so I've been covering sports for 33 years, all over this uh, beautiful country, <laughs> and uh, I've never heard of the word uh, a sports guy use schadenfreude, ever, mm-hmm. ever, ever. When we started 1040, our boss has told us, always pretend like you're in a bar talking sports with somebody. I've had the boys over to my house for hockey night in Canada. You know, we're drinking Crown, having beers, uh, and no one's ever used schadenfreude. Only one guy on this earth would use Schadenfreude in a sports text, and that's Blake Price. It makes absolutely no sense. Do you th- how about ninety percent of your audience, Blake, doesn't know what Schadenfreude is? That's not true. That's not true. We should do a poll. I can do a poll. Do you know? Do you know what it means? And, and we'll do. do a poll. Yeah, because Schadenfreude. Just listen to me. I, I googled it. I, I I like googling this stuff. The emotional experience of pleasure. In response to another's misfortune, Schadenfreude is a German word that combines Schraden, which means damage, and Frode, which means joy. Are you telling me Drantz wouldn't know what that Drance means? Drantz is used to Drance is an idiot. Don't bring up Drantz. <laughs> yeah, don't bring up Drantz. But you, sports is about, you know, shits and giggles, having fun, talking sports. Nobody uses the word Schadenfreude except a guy like you, Price, who went to Harvard or Princeton and is uppity up and has to use these fancy words. Does it fit the situation perfectly or not? Is it the perfect word or not? I care. 90% of the people that look at the word schadenfreude don't have a freaking clue what it is, especially sports guys, Blake. Okay, well, let the poll do the, do the talking. I do a poll. Mm. Do a poll. Ricky, you have a great weekend. We hope you get to and from this destination <laughs> wedding safely, and we will catch up next Friday. And buddy. if you end up in Denver by accident, I will not have any schadenfreude. I, yes. I promise you. <laughs> And I'm going to go to I'm going to go to San Francisco this week, and I have this weekend, and I'm going to drop the word Schadenfreude, and I'm going to look at people's faces, and they're going to go, "What the hell are you talking?" They're about? They're going to be like, "Wow, he's a smart guy." Yeah. yeah, I'm going to be talking about the Oakland A's and the San Francisco 49ers, and if I drop in Schadenfreude, people, whatever it is, what is it? Schadenfreude. You got to say it right. Yeah. Look at me like I'm an idiot, Blake. Don Shane, Rick. <laughs> oh, 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 here it comes. Uh, 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 a big Sakaris with a German word. Hey, I went. To, I was in Frankfurt once. <laughs> nineteen eighty. No, no, it was. A, it was. A, I was going overseas, and it was. A, it was a stopover. Nineteen eighty. Oh, really? You backpacking or? No, you didn't get out of the airport. Hey, I was an hour and a half way to Frankfurt Air, Airport. Nineteen eighty. It was. Uh, Ricky was a little guy, about twelve years old. Mm. Anyways, that's my German story of the day. Can I go? I got to go to the airport. Bye. Bye, Ricky. On your, on your way.